Well, hello there. Um, I'm just editing the, the video that I'm just about to uh, show you, uh, which is uh, about uh, replacing the micro switch on the gear lever. So first of all, excuse all the noises in the background. Uh, it seems that uh, everybody's decided to, to get to work today, even though it's a Thursday. And uh, over the road, as you saw in the previous video, they're building a house, so that's making a lot of noise. And at the back it seems they're mowing the public lawns uh, behind our house, and that's quite noisy. So hopefully um, you can hear me okay over the, over the top of all that. So uh, basically you've got uh, one switch for forward, one for back. Um, in fact, I can't remember uh, what it does for neutral. I'll have to have a look. So as you can see, it's stuck in drive, um, which was the situation it was in in one of my earlier videos one of my last videos um, because in the, the previous video where I spoke about the gear stick um, if you have a look at that I managed to, to clean the micro switch with some WD-40 which fixed it temporarily this van hasn't moved for a few months now uh, it means that it's stuck in in drive again um, so if I so you go back in lift it out to going to reverse and so it's in reverse you can't see because of the reflection there so it's in reverse we do that normally it should go into neutral but as you can see I'm probably this side would be better because you've got the switches but basically there's a, there's a bad contact in one of the switches and so if I, if I move the gear stick about which I'm doing here you can see it flickers between neutral and drive and it doesn't really help that the actual mounting for the, the gear lever is moving about everywhere because it's not really attached to much. Um, you know, this, this dashboard is very thin and it's like a yoghurt pot as we keep saying. But uh, anyway, so yeah, one of the um, switches is, is come loose. So or rather come loose has got a false contact. Uh, so if I put it into drive, it presses, in fact what I'm going to do is, I've bought the new switch, so I'll just show you that. Uh, you can see it's uh, got, it got two, two, three contacts on there, okay, and then you've got a micro switch on the top, which presses down. So it, on, on here it's upside down, so it's sort of that way I think. Yeah, no, that way. So it's that way. So I can just pop that in. So it's that way, like that. And when it's not, um, what's it in there? It's supposed to be neutral. Okay, so when it's in drive, it's not on the switch at all. Okay, so it's basically not switching anything. And I guess the I guess the cable um, attached to the um, I guess the carburetor. I know about these things. No, I don't. Um, so yes, yeah, it's, it's basically the cables connected. To, it must be connected to the, the the equivalent of a carburetor. I've never even bothered to look. It shows you how much I know. So basically, when you put it into reverse, it goes onto this bottom switch, and that's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that bottom switch there. Okay, so that's functioning as it should. Uh, so if I go like that, it goes into neutral, or supposed to. And that's the switch, the, the replacement switch has just gone on the floor. Um, so yeah, so basically, when this switch is activated, well, it tells the van that it's in neutral, and so you can't uh, start the engine. Uh, it's a safety feature. So if you do that into drive, it takes a switch off, and if you do that, it switches it on. So basically this switch needs replacing, because this switch here, which basically puts it into neutral, isn't working properly. Okay, so basically I'm going to have to take all the cables off and put the new one on. So I need two hands to do that, so I'll see what I can do about replacing the switch and I'll get back to you. So that's the replacement switch. So it's it's quite easy to just undo these two screws and then 
you don't get any screws with the switch so don't lose them because uh, you have to use the ones that are on the van basically or ones that you can find it's probably better to use the ones that are there so that's all screwed on so basically I said it was supposed to have been in focus and my camera doesn't seem to want to focus on the switch properly um, to tell you the truth this camera is completely useless anyway anyway so not too difficult a job um, just uh, basically uh, managed to lever the wires or the crimps off off the contacts with the screwdriver and then slid them back on. The only thing that worries me is that they could come off again Does it take, I'm not sure enough to take them off you've got to really pull to, to get them off or pull and use a screwdriver so they seem to be fairly well fixed on they move about a bit and this one seems to, seems to have been locked on somehow so because what I worry about is the fact that because this van vibrates a lot because it vibrates a lot it means that if you've got something that's fairly loose it's just going to come off and then contact will stop working which it could be a bit alarming if you're driving along and you can't select your gears properly so I don't really want to experience that so at the moment everything's hunky dory everything's working so if you look here it's in neutral there's no problem into drive as soon as you come off the switch. So as soon as that that trip switch here underneath is released, it's straight into drive. See, I'm doing this with my finger. So push it up into neutral, release into drive, and then reverse is the, is the switch at the back. So it's a completely separate switch. Don't ask me where the wires go. Uh, I've no idea. Uh, I haven't got a clue. Um, and I, <laughs> so you've got a white wire and you've got a brown, brown wire um, that's pretty misleading as well it's not very logical at the bottom you've got a green and a brown wire so I'm presuming the brown wire is uh, live um, although I didn't actually uh, I don't think I switched the ignition enough to, to do it but uh, yeah so job done I think we could say that that's, uh, that's pretty good well that's something I I thought of and I forgot. Um, this cover, which is all mouldy at the moment, and ick, in fact it fixes on quite easily. You got, if you look underneath, you got like some some little clips here, um, sort of quite long clips, and then you got some sort of rectangular. Oh, I can't see it now. I could see it before with the camera. There we go. Just about see it. You got sort of like a little rectangular hole, got four rectangular holes, and basically you you push it down. If I do it on camera, it's not going to be a smooth, probably. I don't think we'll start here; it'd be easier. So you push it in like that. That's it. That's your lock. Uh, that one and that one doesn't want to go in. Is it already in? that's already in so yeah and that's your lot so I'll switch the ignition off before I flatten the battery so back and out to reverse let go into neutral push down forwards into drive simple as that I'll tell you something I dream of one day fitting a push button um, sort of arrangement you know I could even put it in here you know, click three buttons, drive, uh, neutral, reverse, uh, like a Voigt um, or ZF type affair, but I'm dreaming. Um, in fact, the new new Citroen Ami uh, has um, three buttons to to select uh, drive, neutral and reverse. And in fact, the buttons are sort of, will be down here. So if you're driving, you select the buttons down here. So that's quite good. It's quite clever. But uh, I dream of having a push button selector. But there we go. So hopefully you won't have any problems now. So anyway, I hope it's been interesting for you. Uh, feel free to to look in now and again to to see uh, the latest developments. I think the next thing is going to be the rhubarb at the front, the, the big metal bar, um, which is because um, now the front's back on. 
I'll just stuck the bar underneath so you can just uh, see see the bar there. Uh, just uh, so I'm trying to look at the screen and do that at the same time. Oh, that's upside down. That's clever. It's probably not upside down to you, but it was upside down to me on my screen. So yeah, there's the rhubarb um, or rhubarb. Seems a bit silly, really, to call it that when you think about a little plastic van uh, uh, trying to flatten the kangaroo. But uh, no, I don't think that would happen somehow. Whoops. So yeah, the idea is, is that uh, next week my brother-in-law will come to help me to fit it because that involves jacking the van up. And I'm not too sure where I'm supposed to jack it without bending something or damaging something. Uh, plus the fact that I have to disconnect the front wishbones. So, thanks for watching and take care of yourselves. See you again soon. Bye. Beep, 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 beep.